Tip Tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we're taking a look at how to get the most out of your black and white photography. Um, how to get a really nice high contrast, crunchy looking um, black and white, which you see used a lot in portrait um, photography and uh, other places as well. But it works really well to accentuate these sort of, you know, wrinkles and, and hair and things like that. It looks really good. It's important to note that these aren't my photos. I did get them from pexels.com. Uh, this isn't a sponsored video. I just think they're good. That's Pexels. They look like Pixel, but with an E. Um, they just do stock photography. They're very good. I'm going to show you how to do this one and to prove that it works in other techniques as well. Uh, I'm going to show you on a couple of different files. So what we're going to do is drag in four images that I have here. A laughing lady, some muscles, a screaming man and a picture of a flower. Um, so let's do the screaming man first. OK, so the first thing you're going to want to do so you don't damage your original layer so you can undo everything you want is to duplicate it. That's control J or command J on a Mac um, and then head up to image adjustments and contrast. Now, this one already has quite a bit of contrast in it. So all we really want to do is push it up just a touch just to accent these sort of like um, stubble here. You know, the really in focus, crisp hair, things like that somewhere between eight or 10 for this particular image. And if it was a touch dark after that, you can brighten it up a tiny amount too. Um, that'll probably do it. Uh, we're just gonna duplicate that again because I like to be super safe um, when I'm working with this stuff. So now we've got original high contrast and then whatever we're gonna do on this next layer, um, which is actually gonna turn it to black and white. Now, you'd be tempted to go hue saturation, saturation zero, to get black and white, but that's actually not a great way to do it because you don't have a huge amount of control. Uh, the best way is to use the black and white preset. Now, originally this will give you a, a similar result, um, but what this does is it allows you to control the element of brightness per color tone in the image. So if I just cancel out of this, for example, you can see that there's quite a few sort of red, pinky, magenta tones, um, but all the yellows and things are sort of in the background. So when we do actually add our black and white, if we were to adjust the yellows, for example, it's going to adjust the brightness of just the yellows in that image. And if you push it both ways, you can see you get a lot of um, breakdown, um, a lot of pixelation in the image, which isn't what you actually want. Um, so it is best to work with a light touch when doing this sort of thing. So I'm going to drag the reds down a bit because that's going to bring his skin tone down. And you can see already you're really getting that really nice crunch. Um, probably don't want it too far. And yellows will just drag down a touch maybe up because that's mainly the backgrounds. There's not much green in this picture. You can see that you drag it both ways and not really much happens. So we'll leave that roughly where it was. Cyan's gonna affect his t-shirt the most. Um, I don't want it to be distracting. So I'm actually gonna drag it all the way down and it will just affect these um, uh, highlights and the cyan on his t-shirt. Blue, again, not much in it, mainly t-shirt stuff. So I'll drag that all the way down and the magenta is gonna affect certain parts of his skin tone. Now you can see it starts to look silly if you drag it all the way. So the best thing to do is find where it was at the start and just give it a nudge. Nudge up if you want it to be a touch brighter. Nudge down if you want it to be a bit darker. I'd say about there looks good. We'll just hit OK. Duplicate that layer again and then just go up to image adjustments and curves. OK, now on your RGB curve, I find it nice to just bring that black up a touch. And what that does just flattens out some of the grays like so and then in the reds you can drag those out and makes it a nice cool slight blue tone and again if you want to add some of that black back in you can do it like so now that to me looks great but if you don't want that extra bit of color um, you just don't do that last curve step um, but i really like giving it sort of a slight color tone to the black and white so it's not truly true black and white it's a bit more of a hue than that Okay, so that's the first one. Uh, I'm just gonna go a bit quicker through the rest of them now, because it's the same technique, it's just showing that you can apply it to any kind of colored image. Now this one we know here is gonna have a lot of magenta in it. Um, so when we go and do our adjustments, we'll just take that into account. Image, adjustments, contrast. The blacks here have already been faded up to gray to give it that sort of Instagram-y look. So we'll probably skip that step as well. Um, so we'll just bump up the contrast a touch, drag the brightness down. Uh, duplicate that again, image adjustments, black and white. And you can see here that if I adjust the reds, it looks crap because, uh, sorry, it looks quite bad because um, 
the skin tone due to the filter that's already applied to it is mainly in magenta, as you can see. Okay, so we'll just leave that where it was and just adjust ever so slightly. Let's see what blue is there any blues in there? Ah, oh, the blues sort of affect the shadows, so that's nice. Maybe we'll darken those up a bit. Check out what cyan does. Mm, not much really. Uh, about greens. No, there wasn't much green in the photo because that original and yellow should affect her highlights. So if we put that back where it was, maybe just tweak it a touch like so. Nice one there. Duplicate that layer. Go to your curves. On RGB, we'll bring that black up a touch. See what that looks like. And we'll go to the reds and cool the picture off a bit. Perfect. I'm happy with that. So you get a different sort of feel to this one because her skin, oops, excuse me, her skin's obviously a lot smoother. Um, so you don't get as quite much crunch in these lovely sort of creases and folds in his skin and things like that. Um, but it still looks good. Okay, let's check out something which doesn't have a person in it then. Um, duplicate the layer, image adjustments, uh, brightness slash contrast, bump up that contrast just a touch. Maybe drop the brightness a little bit too. Duplicate that again black and white. Um, and let's see what we're working with here. Now there are some presets. You can do maximum black, for example, um, which looks quite nice. Good way to get there. There's a green filter, which basically filters out the green to make the greens brighter and whiter, all sorts of things. You can do the whole thing lighter. You can do maximum white. Um, I find it's best to just sort of play around until you get what you want. Reds, for example, we're going to darken up those muscles. So let's do that. Yellows should affect, like I said, the lemon things. So maybe we'll just Maybe we'll leave those where they are for now until we find out what the others do. Green is just going to affect some of the garnish. Bring those signs up a touch. Darken up those blues. Magenta's not really going to do anything. So we'll just crank it down to get that nice bit of texture here. And then we'll adjust the red to bring out the image a little bit just to flatten it. Hit OK. Duplicate that and go to our curves and flatten out some of that black just a little not too much and drop out just a little bit of those reds um, now if you wanted to you could push it the other way and warm up the photo a touch i just think it looks good, good with a tiny amount of green in there um great one more then duplicate that layer image adjustments brightness and contrast Again, these have already had colorization done to them, so it's a bit different than working with the raw photo, but the principle is the same. Bump up that contrast, maybe lose the brightness a touch so we get a bit of texture back in these um, folds of the clothes, like so. Duplicate that and go to black and white. Um, and then let's do maximum black so that looks like looks awful. So maximum white looks like looks a bit better. Let's start with the maximum white preset and work our way from there. Red's going to bring out the darkness of her skin, which will work well against the pale white of the uh, t-shirt, blouse, if you want to call it. Bring up that flower just a touch. Any greens in there? Maybe there's, there's a few in the background. You don't want to get that little halo effect around the flower, though, what you do with when, when you get low amounts of a colour. So we'll just bring that up a touch. Cyan, wow, that's going to affect the denim. Of course it is. So let's see what just a touch of that looks like. Maybe a touch darker, yeah. And the blues are obviously going to affect it as well. And that doesn't really affect anything apart from making the hair look ugly. Okay, so there's one thing which you can do if you uh, aren't particularly happy with very particular spots of your image, and that is to dodge and burn. Now you should do this with a very light hand because it can quickly become destructive. Dodge, um, oops, excuse me, uh, dodge, <laughs> this tool here, will um, brighten light areas of your image and burn will darken black areas of your image. It's best to do this with a soft brush. So we'll find something like this, go to our dodge tool and we'll use it to just, oops, that is not a soft brush. We use it to just tweak up this flower a little bit, like so. And if you wanted to, you could burn 
Oops, excuse me. You could burn the edges of it a little bit to accent the brightness of the center of the flower. And that's really all there is to it. Basically, you're crunching up the colors that um, affect the most contrast in the image and you flatten out the uh, mid-tones a little bit and the low tones using curves. Um, and then you tweak to your heart's consent with dodge and burn. Really is as simple as that. So I hope you found this useful, you guys. Obviously, it is a matter of personal taste. Some people think I may have gone too far with these. Um, I think, screw it, do what you want. It's your photo. <laughs> uh, so yeah, have a good time playing around and I hope you found this useful. If you did, consider subscribing. Uh, and if you didn't, I'm sorry, let me know how bad I am in the comments because I love reading that sort of shit. <laughs> okay, I'll see you all next time. Bye. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks and tutorials. Thanks for watching.